one dominations. Somebody wrote in this book, and today I am reading with a guy from here. From this book. Yeah, somebody wrote in the book. And it says 101 dominations right there. Once there were two dominations named Pongo and Bredetta. Bredetta. They lived in a snug little house in London. Their pets, Anta and Roger Redcliffe, lived with them. Nanny the housekeeper took care of them all. One day, Pango got some wonderful news. Protecto was going to have puppies. Everyone was happy. At last, the big day arrived. Puppies are here, Nanny cried. How many? asked Roger. Eight, Nanny replied. No, shouted Antenna from the other room. Eleven, wait, fifteen? Fifteen puppies, Verdetta was very proud. Oh no, you old rascal, said Roger. He thought puppies were wonderful. They'll get their spots when they are a little bigger, Nanny told them. Right now they're just nitty bitty guys. This guy's like got spots, you know. And suddenly there was a clap of thunder and swift antennas. Old friend Pearl Deville long fur coat behind her. I see the puppies are here at last. She said, I'll buy them all. They're not for sale, replied Roger. You'll be sorry, snapped as Storm of Hongo and Bredetta were happy to see her leave. See the window broke and see her taking them away. But Creole was wasn't finished. They can't stop me, she crackled. Creole had her horses and Jasper burned in to steal the puppies. As soon as as you have a chance to sneak into their house, grab those puppies, she told them. You must wait till the puppies get their spots, she added. But they then they will be mine. Each day the puppies grew bigger and big grew and each day they got more spots. The puppies liked watching television, the show they liked most, but the dog named Thunderbolt. Get him, Thunderbolt, shouted Penny. Time for bed, Pungo said to when the show ended. Aw, Dad, we're not sleepy, said Lucky. That's Lucky right there. After the puppies went to bed, Pongo and Bredetta went to the park. Then Roger and Antenna went with them. But soon as they went out the house, Horse and Jasper went in. Jasper walked Nanny in the attic. Horace put all the puppies into a big sack. They took all 15 puppies.
When Roger and Antenna returned, Nanny told them what had happened. Roger called the police, but the police could not find the puppies. Ping Protecta and Ping Pongo were very upset. And Pongo had an idea. Let's try the Twilight Bar, he said. It's our only hope. Right. All right, agreed Protetta. Pongo barked in a special code. Yip, yip, yap, and yap, and yelp, yelp. Fifteen puppies, fifteen puppies need your help. Holy, all out. Yappers and yappers, we find our, us, uh, help us find our, the cruel and kip, kidnappers. Messes what's was passed from dog to dog. It woke up to Sir a bullhound who lived way out of the country. Hmm. Back to us, sir. The Lucy Goo to Lucy La Goose. Message from the city. An important one, too. It better, I better tell the folks on the farm. Old Toaster's barking. Woke up a cat named Sergeant Tibbs. Tibbs told. Captain a horse to awake a sheepdog named Clone. Clone had picked up his ears. Fifteen spotted poodles were stolen. Stolen. I think the that puppies, sir said Sergeant Tibbs. Tibbs remembered hearing some barking at the old Deville place. Nonsense. That house has been empty for years, said Clone. Not any longer, Captain answered. There's smoke rising from the chimney. Then we better investigate, Tibbs Art. But Cologne going to the old house. Sergeant Tibbs slipped into the house. What a surprise! He saw 1999 domination puppies. Fifteen of them were holded held in front of the TV. The O's must be the ones, Tibbs said. Ed, he raced back to tell the others. The clone sent a message. Dog by dog, the message was passed from country to the city. Listen, party, said Pongo. It's great. Dane had an, an answer for us. The two dominations raced to meet their the big, big dog. The puppies have been found at the the deep L place. The Great Dane said we must go at once. Cried Pedetta. When they got to the country, Sergeant Tibbs and the clone were waiting for them. 
follow us, said Sergeant Tibbs. There's no time to waste. They sneaked into the old house. What does Krua want with all these puppies? Bear Jasper asked. She said, she, she says she's going to make in them into a coat, Horace answered. A dog skin coat? cried Vegeta. How cruel. She counted the puppies. Pongo, she whispered. There are 99 puppies here. We must take them all home with us. Plunko repelled. Let's go. Sergeant Tibbs led the way. Horace and Jasper did not see them leave. They were too busy watching television. Look at that guy. He's like, mmm, watch TV or go? Which one? And he's like, meh. The Dominations followed Tibbs to the barn, but they weren't safe yet. Horace and Jasper had finally noticed puppies were gone. They, Tibbs, they were following their tracks in the snow. Here they come, shouted Tibbs. We'd better do something. I'll hold them off, Captain told Pongo. Domination escaped out of the back door, and Captain gave the bad ones a swift kick when they came through the front door. Oof, look, he's like, ouch! Imagine how, if you were, like, hit in the back from a horse. Ouch, that would hurt. Pongo and Bergetta led the puppy through a snowstorm. Suddenly, Pongo heard a car. Quick, hide. He urgently led the dogs to an un under a bridge. Luckily, Horace and Jasper did not see them. Pongo decided to walk along the frozen stream. That way, Horace and Jasper could not follow their tracks. Home seemed very far away. But look! He almost got caught! Yeah. Look at all those puppies. So many. My nose is frozen. Whispered Blocky. My tail is frozen. And my toes are frozen. All the puppies were tired and hungry. Just then, Pongo heard a friendly bark. Follow me, said Coley. I pick a plate. I have a place for you to stay. The collie led them to a warm barn. Suddenly, friendly cows gave the puppies plenty of milk to drink. Wait, look. I thought they were just trying to mess with the cow, not drinking the milk. <laughs> Soon, 99 puppies were fast asleep in the hay. Tomorrow morning, you can go to the village, said Collie. A labber retriever will meet you there. He will show you the way to get home. The next morning, Pongo and Perdetta continued the way there. Pongo knew that Crow would been looking for would be looking for them. He tried to brush away their tracks, but they branch. Uh, 
who uh, saw their tracks. They're heading for the village. She shrieked. When the dogs reached the village, the lavender was waiting for them. He led the way to an, a, an empty blacksmith shop. I'll get rid of her. I'll get red for you. I got ready. He got ready for those guys. It just says red for you. He said a ride. A ride for you. He said a van is leaving for London. Soon there is room for all of you. Really? She's right there. Did not see her right there. But Krula and her mean had reached the village too. Krula was angry with Horace and Jasper. Find them! Find them now! She shouted. Hongo. How will we get to the van? Detta whispered. <laughs> Just then, Lucky said, Patch. Patch pushed me. He was covered with soft suit. Suit. He pushed me first, Patch whined. He was covered with suit. Two. That gave Pongo an idea. He rolled in the suit. Look, look, I'm a lavender. Come on, Pregetta. Lavadors, yay. Parda, let's be all be lavenders. Soon the Dalmatians were covered with suit. They were going to fool nasty lady. The pups giggled. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Good the job. van was getting ready to leave. But hurry, said the lavender. One by one, the puppies got to the van. They almost made it. But last, a puppy got stuck in the snow. Snow washed off the sock. Oot. After them, Krula shouted. Eesh. They are getting close ones. Clue drove too fast for the slippery road. Watch out, or call ride horse. But Krula was too late. Krula's car was tumbled down a hill, landed on her deep, soft snow. In the deep soft snow. The car was smashed to pieces. Look. All the car pieces over there. Back in London, Anta and Nanny were decorating the Christmas tree. Roger was too upset to help. I miss Pongo and the Diddy so much, said Antenna. I know, answered Nanny. Sometimes. At night, I think I can hear them bark, but it turns out to be a dream. Wait, Grant and Tina, did you hear that bark? And then he flung open the door. A large black jump, large black dog jumped on Roger. And it covered him with kisses and suit. It's Pongo and Bradetta with their little ones, cried Nanny. She said she began dusting off the puppies. Then Antana and Roger noticed the room was filled with dogs. Look, ugh, like all over the place. 
Whatever shall we do with them? Antenna asked. We'll buy a big place in the country, said Roger. A domination plantation. 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 It was very merry Christmas after all. The end. Yay, buddy, you did it. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Flip. <laughs> nice, buddy. Nice. Say goodbye.